说话声音不要，你先说好的。对对对，您先，您先。行，来，这边。谢谢。Good evening. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to OACC. My name is Sally Lee. I'm the executive director of OACC. And I'd like to just welcome you to our center. Uh, we are a community-based um, cultural center where we provide pan-Asian, diverse Asian heritage and contemporary Asian American program to uh, for the community. I'd like to introduce Cal from HS, and also I just want to say how grateful we are to partner with HS to provide this program, and we hope that this uh, the partnership will continue with other programs, and actually we have another program coming up in October, so um, feel free to visit our website for further uh, information, and then I'll introduce Cal. Thank you, Sally, and I, I, we do want to take time to appreciate Sally and the OACC for collaborating with us um, to get this uh, activity tonight set up. And also want to uh, take time to thank um, our AHS staff, Amos, and the rest of the team for putting things together today and um, coming out tonight. And on a Friday night, thank you guys all for coming out. I know it's, it's Friday, and um, you guys made the time to come out here to learn more about um, the speakers and the topic tonight. Um, as Sally mentioned, my name is Cal Se Chow. I'm the Division Director of the Specialty Mental Health Department here at Asian Health Services. Um, and today we have um, two great speakers um, and Yen uh, as the moderator. We have Dr. Joseph Yang, uh, who had his traditional Chinese medicine bachelor's degree and master's degree um, from China and earned his PhD in neuropsychiatry um, at Kobe University in Japan. Um, he specialized in mental health for 30 years and currently has an active practice in Los Angeles area. And Dr. Shea is the medical director of Asian Health Services Specialty Mental Health Division. Uh, she's practiced psychiatry and taught medical students and residents in Singapore, Canada, and the US. Hi, good evening, everybody. No. Good evening. And, uh, Thank you very much for attending the, this kind of communication discussion. Also very precious Dr. Xi and our center, the leaders. Everyone give me the opportunity to present the traditional Chinese medicine and look at certain uh, very important concept to think about how TCM treat our, you know, called mental disorder. Let me start right now. Uh, this title, anyway, uh, we have to let me go next. Uh, let's see, it right here. Uh, we call the, the treatment characteristics of the psychiatric disorder in TCM. So that's the certain the points, uh, certain the concept. I don't want to make things too complicated. Follow the traditional, the medical ideas in the traditional Chinese medicine background. We have several words, we have to make it clear. You see the Jing Qi Shen, right? Hey, the Jing is what? Jing is material. Our body, the flesh. Organs, our muscles, our vessels, even to these nerves, everything. Material based, we call the Jing. So what is the Shen? The third word, Shen is our mentality. So temporarily you remember, Shen is the mentality. Qi, qi is what? We use the qi as energy. Okay, Asian people believe the energy. Everything is qi based. Think about the acupuncture, think about the herbology, even think about the cycle treatment, also exercise. So when we have the qi, we put the jing qi, the two words together. So they call the jing qi, so material type based energy, right? So mentality plus qi together, we call the mental type of qi, mental type of energy. Traditionally, they call the shen qi. So both is the qi based. Also the shen qi and the jing qi, 
they transform each other from the exercise, from yourself, internal process, also from the doctor treatment. So if mental health trouble, we can treat your essence energy to heal it. But also we can treat your mental energy directly. When your mental health, or when you the essence energy have trouble, we treat the essence chi material, right? We treat the organs to heal the uh, heal the organ trouble, but also we can treat your mental to heal your essence trouble. So the both always combine together. So that's the classic, very important concept. They call the xing and the shen in oneness. So the mental energy and the physical based essence energy. The Jing Qi Shen Qi always combine together. Okay, so we know that's the harmony based. Uh, so we know the energy is dynamic, the changing. So from the wide meanings, we say the Shen Qi is what? Shen, for our human body, is life. So Shen Qi is a life energy, right? Because Shen is life, energy is the Qi. Our mental energy, life energy. In the narrow meanings, we have called a mental energy because it's a cycle move inside. There are so many processes. So the mental energy is also called the Shen Qi. So the Shen Qi has two meanings in general. So when we try to make a diagnosis using this kind of concept, we have to know what's called a normal situation. So Asian people, they have so many books and doctor practice in the clinic. They understand we have such called a spiritedness. So you are healthy in the mental status. What does it mean? Number one, Shen Qi unity. The Shen Qi united together, harmonized together. You never allowed one function perform forever, or one side draw you everything goes one direction. They're causing disharmony. Harmony, disharmony is a very important word in traditional medicine. Number two, Shen Qi awareness. Do you know yourself? Do you know your position? Do you know the current orientation? Yes, there's everything called the Shen awareness. Where severe disorder patients, they lost this kind of function. Number three, Shen Qi is clear, clarity, right? Number four, your Shen Qi is flexible. Number five, your Shen Qi is stable. If we're losing all the functions, we have so many different types of mental disorder. In the future, we can talk more. It's a big concept. Number six, Shen Qi balancing. We need a balance. Everything is a yin yang balance. The Qi also in balance. Number seven, Shen Qi has power. So mentally exhausted, we feel mental energy is low. So this low means mental energy exhaustion. Number eight, Shen Qi reactivity. In tradition, we call the Xin Shen Yin Wu. So you, does your heart respond to the outside? Yes. So normal, we have this kind of reaction. So number nine, do you have Shen Qi initiation? You have idea, desire comes from inside? Yes. If you lost in desire, no, nothing interesting, no motivation, you know what happens. For humans, they lost everything, right? The last one, Shen Qi in the process. Internally, everything started, you keep the process. Even that's not connected to any action, but that means you don't have process inside. Our mind keep working, keep running. Sometimes if the process is too busy, you have trouble. Multiple process, too much, messy, in trouble. Single one, repetitive, obsessive, also trouble. So everything related to each other. So all these kind of functions, the mental energy should harmonize together. So everything affects each other. They just look at the different angle to see what kind of mental, mental energy that works inside. So actually everything they work together. You see the Shen Qi process, they start first initiation. You respond to something. You have enough power. You have balance. But also it should be stable and be flexible to changing. Also have the clear awareness. And all the mental energy have to harmonize together to do the functions. You see that's the Asian people? That's very smart. Oh. Okay. After summarize together in the clinic, what happens? This one called the Shen Qi pattern. Do you know the Chinese medicine when treat any disorders, they have to know the pattern. For example, you have a headache. Headache, we give you headache medication. In Chinese medicine, they say, oh, your headache is when the cold attack. Why? You cut the cold. That's a stress-based. Maybe some stress, we need to reduce stress. For example, maybe liver qi, right? 
Or for senior, you may be kidney chi deficiency. We turn back kidney. Same thing like mental type. Shen chi insufficiency. This category indicates all the genetic or physically some trouble introduced. For example, dementia, uh, Parkinson's, or we have drug introduced troubles. Or genetically, something under developmental situation. Okay, they put everything in a category called Shen Qi insufficiency. This is comparable with the today's medicine. You know, the drug introduced, we have a physical basic troubles, right? They cause this kind of mental disorder. We put it in the same category here. Number two, Shen Qi lassitude, more focusing on the no interest, the no motivation. Number three, Shen Qi weakness, talking about the mental energy is low. Number four, Shen Qi irritability, uh, this indicates we call it unstable feeling, busy mind, anxious, moodiness. So the Shen Qi latitude, the Shen Qi weakness, commonly seen in what? Depression, low confidence base, right? Uh, low energy, low mental energy. Shen Qi cloudiness, it's so clouded. Can be, can, can be very severe sometimes. They don't know what they're doing, what they're talking. So Shen Qi cloudiness. Also Shen Qi floating, the idea, the thoughts, illusions, hallucinations, yes, or daydreaming, or in the dream, the dream something else. So that's called Shen Qi floating. Shen Qi scattering, panic, not the center. Shen Qi confusion, losing control, dangerous. Knife, gunshot, uh, not just yelling or something. They're totally losing control, called the Shen Qi confusion. Shen Qi inflexibility, OCD, obsessive, patternized. They do the same thing, repeat the same thing. Catalepsy, right? catatonia. So that's all called the Shen Qi inflexibility. Shen Qi numbness, no response. After trauma, after something shocked, there's no reaction. Or people were deteriorating, the body were collapsed, no action. So that's Shen Qi numbness, it's one category. Also called Shen Qi oversensitivity. Have you had such experience when someone talking the voice too slow, too small? You couldn't hear, you may be thinking they're talking about me. <laughs> you are too sensitive, right? Hey. When you watch TV, crying. Hear some story, crying. And they give the air puncture, oh, feel the pain. Uh, take something, you feel side effects right away. So sensitive. Anyway, all the sensitive situation, we put in this category called Shen Qi over sensitivity. The last one, Shen Qi lost. This one is dangerous. Why? Lost consciousness. In the different level, but our mental energy tried to go away. We lost it. Traditional idea is our body stored Shen. Shen is a kind of energy from the universe. Don't think the brain generates mental energy. The uni universe has energy already there. So when we have our body, our brain structure, when we were born, or when we were in the fetus, the heart start beat, life start created. So the mental energy comes inside our life, inside the structure, and make our life start. So, regarding the treatment, right? Uh, we have four major treatment modalities. That's I designed, developed, <laughs> right now shared with everywhere, including the mainland of China. Hospitals, no, mental hospitals, and my prof uh, not the professionals. Number one, we call the Ben Shen idea, right? What's called the Ben Shen? Ben Shen is this idea from the inner classic. That's one of the famous book called the Nei Jing, the Ling Shu chapter eight. Ben Shen means Shen is the root, Shen is the base. So Shen based, mentality based diagnosis treatment. So Ben Shen acupuncture. Use the Shen based evaluation to think about acupuncture. So different from regular acupuncture, not to treat the shoulder pain, it's treatmental based. Number two, Ben Shen herbology. You pick out the verbs, you have to know the Asian people, how to use the verb to treat a certain situation. That technology we have to bring up and put together to serve our today's people. Number three, Ben Shen psychotherapy. Many people doesn't know we have psychotherapy in traditional Chinese medicine. I can tell you the very much we have, also very good. The last one called the Ben Shen conservation. That's for prevention, also for your health maintenance. So when you, before you have something trouble in Chinese culture, you have to meditation, you have to prevent yourself, you have to repent yourself, you have to review yourself, you have to manage yourself. Don't let the emotion driven everything and give a lot of trouble. So you have to study yourself. And if you have the trouble, you have to do earlier treatment. So that's the Neijing the idea. So when you put together the four modalities, I frequently use in my clinic. Which one first? Depends. Come to my clinic. I don't want to do acupuncture suddenly. 
based on your situation. Maybe start a conversation cycle first. I maybe give you tell you lifestyle changes, exercise plan first. So I may add, a, add the herbs and add acupuncture later. Depends. So that's a four, basically. So I have the three, uh, this kind of diagnosis system, three levels. Dian Kuang, Shen Qi, Wu Shen. This is where talking with the professionals. In the future, uh, if you're interested, come to me. Uh, also, we have to make the Xing, a body and mind together, harmonize together. So this makes this kind of diagnosis. Organs, channels, micro and micro. Macro, what does it mean? Do you know you have a mental situation? Weather changes may affect you. Seasonal change may affect you. Your living environment, too much damp, mold, germs, affect you. You don't make the body clean, that can be affect you. It's true, because the trending energy environment in the universe always associated with our body. So TCM knows this. They're telling you have the wind, the damp, the cold, the dryness. They're telling you this. Uh, also, the micro means you have the body internal. Not to say you have anxiety only, your internal causes anxiety, your heart got in trouble, anxious, you're rising, busy, but you have weak kidney. So different organ, different system shows a different energy pattern. So that's why it requires a training, diagnosis. We can properly pick out the acupuncture and herbs to treat you. And also we know the mental illness affects physical and the body illness can affect mental. So traditionally we call it, uh, we call it uh, hua shen zheng zhuang, chong shen er hua, transform to be the mental. You have a physical situation, but for some reason, they transform to be the mental sign. You have minor anxious anxiety. You know the female has the menstrual, premenstrual trouble. But some are not so clear why have some moodiness. So do you know the organ inflammation, blood clotting or something? Yes, the children to be the mental side. Another side also, children to be the physical. You have mental situation, but the body gives you more signs. You have migraine headache. We have the certain female, they have a shoulder pain. After treating for a while, oh, stress related. You see? So you have to treat the stress and the pain management. So that's all type. Basically, children to be the mental type we are much more ignored. We know somatization situation, so how about the transplant in the mental? We have a lot of evidence. Do you know Lyme disease? Do you know the polio? Yeah. So this kind of disorder normally can affect people with chronic stress, chronic anxiety, some kind of minor depression, or some kind of minor discomfort feeling, because your body is not so healthy, that's why. So that's the physical affect mental, transplant to be the mental energy. In the traditional medicine, we have the way to regulate the both energy. Absolutely, we need a doctor help. We need antibiotics. But in many of the cases, we need to manage the internal qi energy. Use the traditional acupuncture and the herbs. Pull out cycle support and the lifestyle changes. Modify life, we change it, can change it a lot. Okay, so any mental disorder, we call it shen zhi, uh, mental. We call it shen disturbance. In traditional words, you have to know the duration, Intermittence in the seasonality or the water reason, causality. So that's better. Uh, so, anyway, everything right here is offline, just give you a general title. Everything, like if I go to detail, I can talk a lot. But based on the clinic situation, I hope I can listen to your question so we can make more discussion. Right here, two websites, very important. Number one, this is the American Institute of the Mental Health in Traditional Chinese Medicine. This is founded last year, that's my institute. Uh, we have uh, the over 10, 12 uh, members right now. So that's the first one, AIMHTCM.org. It's called uh, MTCM, <laughs> MTCM.org. Number two is my clinic, IQFather.com. That's my, called the Working Daddy, <laughs> IQFather.com, Working Daddy. So you can check the website to find more information. I hope I connect with you in the future. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay. So um, we will leave the question to the end of the discussion. And the, 
Thanks, Dr. Yan, for such a wonderful talk. I want to say I'm going to talk about Western medicine's perspective. You guys just heard about traditional Chinese medicine's perspective. How do they, you know, understand, you know, mental illness? I would say after listening to Dr. Yan's talk, as many of the stuff we actually agree with each other. The only big difference I heard is traditional Chinese medicine think our mentality, our mental energy actually come from the nature. And the, the, uh, so a lot of mental illness uh, probably is explained in that way versus Western medicine, we feel of the, you know, mental illness come from the brain. I think that's it's a huge difference we have. But in terms of, you know, uh, treatment modality, I can see there are lots of similarity. So I'm going to go through that with you guys. And uh, I'm going to talk about this model, so-called the biopsychosocial model of the mental illness. This is only one of the very, you know, many kind of theory about mental illness. There are other models, but this is the one we used uh, in the, you know, across the old country. This is the general one we used most often. So I said this is the primary model. So everybody, if they claim they are mental health expert, they should know this model. So for many of my colleagues, all of those probably is not new for you. Okay. Um, so what we talk about biopsychosocial, bio is just biological, and the psycho is psychological and the social. So when we talk about biological, the Western medicine think about biological aspect, of course, is a genetic, your gene. Everybody's talking about your gene. And then, you know, illness, physical illness, uh, infection, disease, and toxin from the environment, or maybe you have brain injury from, you know, the birth, or, you know, traumatic brain injury, or you use some drug or alcohol, and the, all of those things maybe uh, change the neurobiochemistry in your brain. And that's what we talk about, the biological aspect and how that would be contribute to your mental illness. And then the psychological aspect, we talk about you as an individual, how you see yourself, how you see your relationship with people around you, and how you see your relationship with the big world, your perspective actually also contribute to your mental health, because that is going to you know, um, make you feel a certain way. If you feel the whole world, everybody loves me, care about me, you're probably going to be happier. But if you think, you know, everybody's trying to get me or hurt me, then you're going to be guarded and you're going to be paranoid, we say. And so that is a huge part of, you know, kind of a psychological factor. Also, we have, everybody has a different way of dealing with things. It's the same kind of events, but um, people will take different approach. I often, I'm a child psychiatrist, so when kids come to my office, I will ask them, oh, if you walk to the school and your best friends just turned around, didn't say hi to you, what's your thoughts? And some of the kids will say, oh, I think, you know, my friends just doesn't like me anymore. Other kids will say, oh, I think my friends were busy, had something else going on. So that kind of thought is going to lead to, you know, your behavioral change, whether you are going to say hi to your friends or, you know, keep the friendship or not. It's, you know, it depends on how you feel about the events, right? And so that's what we talk about, your personality, your coping styles is going to have fact your mental illness. And also, you know, a personal, uh, you know, kind of sense of meaning, what's it life for? A lot of young people is going to ask, what's that for? You know, what's the meaning of the life? And they, um, I think a, uh, if it's a young person, I often say, you're born as a white piece of paper. Who is drawing on this piece of paper is going to determine like how you feel about the life. 
So that's just the psychological aspect. And then, then we talk about social aspect can be so broad. We talk about your family environment, you know, your relationship with your parents, were you well cared for, or you are neglected, abused, that, that will affect you, and your social economic status, like I was often tell people, uh, I was born in a very remote part of countryside. We're so poor, we feel we are kind of inferior to others. So that kind of sense will contribute to your mental illness. And the, um, uh, I already mentioned something about you know early adverse life events, abuse, and the neglect. How that you know contribute to your mental illness. So that's as we talk about etiology. I can use an example. For example, how Western medicine learn about it, uh, about PTSD. I just use PTSD as an example, and uh, uh, Probably people in the audience know Kaiser is one of the biggest uh, health provider in California. Kaiser did a very famous study, and that they uh, surveyed a huge population. They found out that people with a lot of early childhood kind of adverse life events tends to later develop hypertension, diabetes, obesity, just all kinds of health problems. Of course, also mental health problems. And then people around the world said, wow, there's a huge data that says something is happening. So um, they wanted to understand. So people's research found out, actually, when you had a lot of those experiences, your immune system is damaged because you constantly has this stress hormone circulating in your body, damaged in your immune system, which kind of go along with what Dr. Yang said. When your immune system is down, you tend to have more health problems, like Lyme disease, Dr. Yang mentioned. So it's a very similar idea. So let's talk about etiology. And then we said a general category of illness, to be honest, I don't like it because it does not connect with the ideology what we're talking about. And we say main category is anxiety, mood, schizophrenia, eating disorder, developmental disorder, substance related or personality disorder. But this category does not connect to the the ideology, as you can tell. So uh, nobody practice in our field like this category, but we have to use for now. <laughs> and then um, when we you know, have a patient come in, what do we do? How do we figure out how to help the patient? So we will ask them, oh, what's going on with you right now? So that actually help us to understand, do you have more anxiety problem, depression, psychosis, or what? And then we'll ask her what happened in the past, what kind of events, what, what kind of impairment it caused. Then we talk about social history. Like I said, we need to understand this person's environment from the you know, working or schooling environment to family environment to the whole community. We collect all of the information. Then we talk about family history, you know, kind of elicit the kind of genetic factor. And then we do this exam, and then, you know, I think a traditional Chinese medicine also look at your tons and all of those. But we do a so-called mental status exam. Look at your mental status, see how you talk, behave, and how is your thinking pattern, how is your memory, how is your cognition. At the end, we come to a kind of conclusion. We say we have a formulation based on all of the information we collect. We say there's a, a biological factor is this, this, this. A psychological factor is this, this. And then social factor are those. And all of those contribute to your current uh, mental status. And because we collect all of this information, we can use this to guide to our treatment. So our treatment, in a way, is also target to those three aspects. We, medication treatment is more for 
uh, the biological aspect because we feel there is a neurochemistry change. So current medication will target a serotonin system, dopamine system, and then we also do psychotherapy. And our psychotherapy have many different formats. They are attachment-based, they are cognitive behavioral therapy, they are ways to help you problem solving. So it's based on uh, your psychological style and your main uh, illness to decide which form of psychotherapy is helpful for you. And we also do, you know, education, case management, because if you stress come from your work or from you not having a place to live, and then we do those environments. That's a lot of uh, work being done at Asian Health Service uh, by our case manager and the therapist. So, uh, so that's a therapy. So I, this is a simple <laughs> kind of uh, introduction of Western approach. And I want to thank of a uh, colleague working at uh, Asian Health Service to, to make that happen. And I really also appreciate OSCC to support us for this event. And we will move to case discussion. And we really want you guys to participate, ask the question. So thank you, guys. <laughs> So as Dr. Shea was saying, um, we're going to be doing some vignettes, some case studies. And um, after each uh, discussion, we will invite questions. But um, And there should be like a wireless microphone being rotated in the audience. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable using the microphone, feel free to use the yellow slip of paper that you have in your chair to write down your questions. And um, after that, if we have extra time at the end, we'll go ahead and answer those questions too. So when you have questions, you can write it down and pass it to uh, the end, and then someone will pick it up. Okay. So the first case study, a 24-year-old Chinese male immigrated to the United States five years ago with family, laid off from work six months ago, no friends, staying in his room all day playing video games, not, motiva not motivated, does not want to see his primary care provider or seek mental health services because he believes that he's fine. Parents don't think that he is depressed, but wants their son to take Chinese herbal medicine for ongoing insomnia, stomach pains. Parents believe that their son's qi is unbalanced, the family have been struggling post-immigration due to language barriers, financial constraints, and a lack of supportive network. So maybe we'll start off with Dr. Yang. Uh, if this individual were to come into your office, what are some of your thoughts? Okay. Uh, this case, in our medicine, first, we have three levels of diagnosis. Number one, this case, close inside, play the game, don't want to meet any people. So this is called the yin pattern. We call it DN syndrome. Another one, we have to evaluate the internal, the mental energy. Is it more excited attention based or depressive based, low energy based? This one, not so sure. If we put in the low energy based, we have to lift in the mental energy. Number three level, we have to see which organ system attached. More palpitations based, we know that's heart. More low appetite based, that's the spleen system. More hypochondriac situation, liver system. More urination or reproductive function based is the kidney system. More bracing based is the lung system. So based on these kinds of symptoms, we can find more information. We can give you acupuncture and the herbs. So that's the next step. What about you, Dr. She? So uh, in this case, I think from Western medicine point of view, we're probably going to collect more information and to understand before he become ill, what was going on. You know, and we want to understand whether they are family history, and then uh, based on the brief, you know, uh, kind of history, I would say most likely, per Western medicine approach, he might be depressed or anxious. So we're probably going to say, okay, 
uh, sound like you're depressed or anxious. We are going to, uh, because they are against medication, we probably go with more kind of psychotherapy. And we also think of this, you know, excessive video game. It's go along with, you know, substance abuse or addiction direction. So we're going to probably use more kind of we call the motivational interview to motivate this young person to change, to, to find out what kind of thing can motivate him change. For video game, we're probably going to help him to say, let's find the other thing you are interested to do. That's motivated to, to have you develop more interest in than just, you know, play video game all the time. And then that probably going to promote, you know, physical health and help with the sleep. And then and we probably based on the information we collect, we understand his personal style to decide whether what kind of other kind of psychotherapy modality we're going to use. And if he later change mind, we may use medication just to say, let's, let's just help you with sleep. That's what you care about. Let's focus on, you know, the symptom you concern the most and you're willing to receive treatment and we go along with that. Yeah. Any follow-up thoughts? Yes, uh, the Dr. Xie mentioned a very important part. Also, that's our medicine we call the time-based treatment. If the, some of the patients show the certain behavior or certain, for example, paranoia or certain excitation or certain addiction or gaming on a certain time of the period in our medicine, that's very meaningful. One, we can do the replacement to use a healthy one like, uh, we say, sports or other activities to replace it. Also, that time, it's very perfect we have to do the treatment. Normally, we can regulate energy before the gaming or during that kind of period of time. That's why my clinic from the early morning until midnight, <laughs> and from the working days until the weekends, you have to do the different type of shift. Uh, before, we have one word called the zi wu liu zhu. This part is not really de uh, developed and uh, more recognized by the biomedicine yet, but very important. The herbs, if you take a different timing, the effectiveness can be very different. When you do the acupuncture, you treat a different disorder, morning, noontime, evening. It can be performed a different way, and it gives you different results. So we have to pay attention. Now, in the future, we can talk something more here. I guess my question would be, would this individual be a good fit for both traditional Chinese medicine and psychiatry, hand in hand, or would it be kind of in opposition of one another? Uh, we, in general, in my clinic, uh, we very cooperatively work with a biomedical doctor together. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the something I cannot handle for acute situation and a very bad situation, psychotic or a certain situation, the medication works fast. Mm -hmm. But my goal is not to rely on that. Mm -hmm. hey, take a while. When the TCM, the effectiveness, kicked in, we can start to discussion to sh to think about how to taper down the medication. But it basically. As the alternative medicine in the USA system, you have to respect the doctor plan. Mm -hmm. Don't disturb their already made a certain treatment, they already formulated, because they hold the patient well. Mm -hmm. But if the patient not really improves so much, also especially when the patient has a lot of side effects, the doctor doesn't have the way to handle. So TCM, TCM this kind of treatment can make a very big difference. Mm -hmm. I treat many patients also with a lot of side effects. Mm -hmm. For example, when high school students, with the medication, he should, she doesn't have any memory, he had to fall asleep, take a rest, take many day offs. Mm -hmm. But under my treatment, he takes it in the same time, he takes medication, working on this, that kind of mental trouble, mm -hmm. but I lift in the energy, regulate the mental function. Mm -hmm. He maintained all the high school learning mm -hmm. and the inter university. I think we can, we have, we can do the more cooperative uh, the treatment. If it's from you know Western medicine view, if the patient is open to traditional Chinese medicine, I will in this situation I will be more than welcome because right now I just want to take him away from the computer, and the, the time he goes to the TCM clinic, that's the time he's also away from the computer, and I want him to be away from computer as much as possible, and also in this situation any like a more healthier human interaction is going to have a positive, you know, influence on 
you know, his symptom too. So I will be, you know, more than welcome to have him go, you know, whatever he's willing to engage, as long as it's not harmful. Yeah. Um, we do have a question from uh, the audience, and um, do you guys feel like it's appropriate to answer now, or do you feel like as the vignette move forward, we can address that? Okay, let us see. Uh, question for Dr. Yang. My acupuncturist does not believe that acupuncture can, he can heal mental disorder, mental health issues, mm -hmm. or can only treat physical. Uh, only physical. Uh, what do you, what do you have for other than uh, refer her to your website? My website right there. Oh, that should be fine. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, uh, he doesn't believe it doesn't matter. He need a training. Tell her to come <laughs> to our training program. <laughs> we can um, always start training in China for uh, for some of the PhDs uh, or some fundamental some health doctors. We just started, and uh, we have more communication in the future. Right now, I was elected as the uh, the TCM World Federation the Mental Health the Wise Director. Uh, anyway, I want to let the people know that TCM can treat mental disorder. Uh, now I try to close, uh, make it closer to the mental hospital. So if you have more uh, evidence, the people start to think about that. They gave me the two very difficult uh, schizophrenia the case when I was in the northern city, one city called Chichihar. Who knows Chichihar? That's a big town also. So the mental hospital gave me two uh, severe uh, schizophrenia patients. I asked from the beginning until the end, talent plan, the treatment, and everything. They're surprised because nobody summarized this kind of information to let people know the TCM has such tools. They, they call the TCM doctor, but they use medication more often. So that's why. So you use the medication, we have Dr. Xie. As a TCM doctor, you can think about the alternative medicine, natural healing, that's, that's right, right? So she doesn't have any background. But not to blame her. Even my coworker, many people <coughs> doesn't know TCM has the shen determines. But such words right in our classic, in the inner classic, Nei Jing, the book, the modern, nobody read it. <laughs> so that's now we have to summarize together to let the ancient wisdom to serve the people. So um, are there quick questions for the two of them? Perhaps we can move on to the second vignette to see if um, other questions can be answered along the way. Okay. So second case. Oh. Hi, um, actually I have a question for Dr. Yan. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, like from the med uh, Western med medicine perspective, um, if a person have been exposed to uh, chronic external distress and um, the stressor was the causing for mental, um, mental illness, and um, I'm wondering with this ongoing external distress, um, how does Chinese medicine um, can I don't know how does the philosophy or how was the approach for Chinese medicine to treat people who have very minimum skill or um, uh, low tolerance of ongoing um, um, external distress? Uh, okay, so basically you see my diagnosis, uh, the system, they have several categories. Uh, if I understand you uh, exactly, I think your category following to the mental energy is weak, called the Shen Qi weakness. And it may be related also called the Shen Qi sensitive, oversensitivity in that category. Because there's any type of mental energy, you can make a different type of combination. So and mental energy has combination, but which one we call the primary pattern. That's why you have to focusing on more uh, putting energy to do the treatment. So based on the combination, based on the patient situation, we pick out the herb and the points, to do the treatment. Meanwhile, also we gave psychotherapy, TCM type. What psychotherapy? You mentioned the patient weak, exhaustion, also oversensitivity. We can use the nature to do. For example, if the patient energy is very low, we call the yang qi is weak, we can do the morning sunshine treatment, exercise. If this patient is fire-based, too much heat, we can do the evening, go to the cooling place, like grass, water, we do the exercise. We have, uh, we have several forms, very important, the qigong, and the breathing exercise. 
based on the patient's different type of mental status, also based on our medicine, the TCM medicine, the energy pattern, yin yang pattern. So we can offer that. We can make some good remedy for this. Uh, if I not uh, misunderstand your question. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So for the next vignette, a 42-year-old Cambodian male, his father died in the war when he was a baby. He joined a gang when he was in his 20s after immigrating to the United States. He witnessed his friend's suicide during this time. He left the gang but has been unable to keep a job for longer than six months at a time because he's been getting into disagreements with coworkers and superiors, frequent nightmares about the past, and believes that everyone is trying to take advantage of him. Go first, okay. <laughs> no problem. So basically, this is the traditional Chinese medicine idea called a shang shen, also called a shen shang, shen injury. Shen injury is very old words. They covered the PTSD, also covered many mental, the earlier history based. But as an adult, also you can be shen injury. The daddy, uh, you know, passed away from the war. It's a very tragic, uh, very sad story. There's a trauma. But later they have friends, right? Also passed away. This kind of double punch makes, uh, that for sure changed his something. But one thing we have to confirm, before his father passed away, what kind of personality? Because traditional medicine, we believe you have yin yang pattern. So how to perceive this kind of situation? Maybe before you have certain tendency, that's one. Or this kind of trauma changed everything. So after that, what's the personality changes? They change the mental energy. That's why I work with a coworker, they not feel happy. That's not sure the coworker did something wrong. More important is how do you deal with, cope with your current situation? That's more important. So work with this kind of patients, we call the mental exercise very important. Traditionally, we have several tools. For example, we do call a self review. Do the breathing, watch the self. From the self study, self review, breathing, gradually people image self, something missing, something wrong. And from there, they can make a self conscious self study. And they try to remedy themselves. Also, as a doctor, normally we give the discussion on certain topic. The topic can be just general life topic. Your sleep, your eating, your exercise. How do you feel yourself? Do you feel happy? Uh, what's the relationship? What's your family member? Uh, you, you can start this very simple, but very close to the patient itself. The, this kind of topic to start discussion. So let the patient recognize everything close to them is most important. How the people manage the stress and cope with the situations. So that's the style. Another, these patients, if they were agitation, anger, impulsive, we call it a Kuang pattern. The last one is the end, right? It's the yin pattern. This one is the yang pattern. Because the emotion shows outside, mental energy goes outside, out, outgoing type. So these kind of patients, we can do inverted meditation and the qigong uh, the exercise. So they can increase the internal feeling. And they watch outside and then pay more attention to calculate things. Don't be impulsive. So meditation, self-study can manage this kind of stress, reduce impulsive behavior. Also, at a certain exercise, like Ba Gua, and a certain, the Tai Chi, we do a little bit of slow motion based. So let the patient learn the patiently to study this kind of exercise and it change their personality. That's mental energy based. So Tai Chi, in the, uh, we know the a certain, the, you know, Ba Gua or something, that's not a simple like, exercise. Depends what you do, depends your heart. They change the mental energy as well. So that's the patient how to learn uh, some of the basic. Absolutely plus acupuncture herbs to remedy this kind of mental situation. We have the strategy for that. Uh, thank you. Dr. Shea. So, so that's quite interesting to hear, right? Uh, I, I think if the audience are familiar with the Western medicine approach, you probably say, hey, Western medicine do very similar things. Um, like in this case, if we talk about Western medicine's diagnosis, we probably going to say this person most likely have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, because 
that so much trauma happened to this person at such a young age. And so we probably can say primary is PTSD, the secondary could be because of ongoing trauma and the PTSD, that person most likely to be depressed. So that's probably two, you know, if we want to say diagnosis, that's what we probably will be. And then come to treatment, then we really would need to know more again about his, you know, own kind of treatment goal, like what he would like to focus at right now. If he want to focus more on the interpersonal issue, and we probably going to recommend more kind of the easy psychotherapy called the interpersonal psychotherapy. It's, um, you know, very much we call the evidence-based kind of type of therapy, help patient to deal with the interpersonal conflict, how to manage that. However, if his symptom at the current moment is more about trauma, the nightmares, remind the past history, we probably going to focus more on so-called trauma-focused therapy. And the trauma-focused therapy at the current moment, uh, they are two major ones, which we also say there are lots of research have done. One is called the trauma-focused CBT. And for you to do a trauma-focused CBT, then the number one step is going to do a lot of something like what Dr. Yang said. You have to have a, we call the coping mechanism. We use the words. Means you are able to manage some of ongoing stress without acting impulsively, without reacting to your trauma. So that we probably going to focus on that first before we even ask this person to talk about the history of trauma. What's that like for him when you know when he was young? The horrible thing happened. So that's this one school of you know psychotherapy for trauma. There's another major school of psychotherapy for trauma. It's called the EMDR. I don't know whether people know, but that's this. Uh, very much provo uh, promoted in the VA hospital. Basically, is have patients. I move from side to side, and then have the person just think about the trauma, so they can process the trauma internally without needing to talk about it, and that help that person kind of become desensitized to the traumatic events and help them to recover. So those are the two major type of uh, psychotherapy we do. And I, if you listen carefully, you will see, see, it's very similar. They also emphasize a lot of body movements to motivate the energy to create yin and yang balance with this Western medicine also emphasize, you know, um, the more like your understanding of what's going on inside of you so you can deal with the situation. So. Any questions before moving on to the next vignette? So what, is, what would be the place within um, an acupuncture treatment of a acupuncture with moxibuction? Just, am I saying it right for you? So, so what, where does moxibuction come from in the treatment of mental illness such as PTSD, um, OCD, as well as insomnia? I mean, insomnia is not mental illness, but it's related to. So. Mm. You asking me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good question. No. Uh, let me straightforward telling you something. Uh, if you ask, say, PTSD, uh, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, how to use the acupuncture to treat it, how to use the herb to treat it, I can tell you, no connection at all. Okay, if no connection, why you say you can do the treatment? We do our evaluation diagnosis first. You have to remember, schizophrenia, bipolar, also mentioned the PTSD, that's all the modern Psychiatry disorder. In the TCM words, we don't talk this way at all. People in the, mo in the currently, they do the simple way. For example, they make a schizophrenia and they add several zhang fu pattern. We call it zhang fu pattern, organ pattern, liver qi fire, a liver qi nation, a heart fire, or some things. But that's not correct. In traditional medicine, we have to evaluate this kind of disorder again. Like we mentioned, the three levels. Diagnosis. 
For example, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, PTSD. I want to add more. If not correct, please, Dr. Xie, right, correct me. The DSM diagnosis, basically, they have several issues. Number one, they have a symptoms-based diagnosis. Anxiety, depression, that's it, symptoms-based. So beyond the symptoms, what is the entire life movement? What kind of, this person as the whole person being performing the word. So we should cover everything. Traditionally, we use called the four diagnosis, the method, observation, and uh, smelling, listening, asking, and palpating. So that's classic four. So we don't use the tool that only listen to say, okay, you have anxiety, we check puncture points. There's no connection at all. So we have to perform our diagnosis, make sure what's the yin yang dian kuang pattern first. Then we have to know your mental energy, how to behave. Then you have to know which organ system involved. So that's very important. That's why people don't pay attention. They think TCM don't treat mental disorder. We are much more focused in the mental uh, energy based. So also we have the diagnosis is the syndrome based. For example, schizophrenia, to me that's a perfect syndrome. Why? You look at the schizophrenia, somewhere in catatonia, catalepsy, that's what? Shen Qi stimulation based. Somewhere paranoia, a lot of story developed the systematic paranoia. That's the Shen Qi floating based. Someone deteriorating, no functioning. Mental is empathy, no desire, no interest. That's the Shen Qi weakness, exhaustion based. But in the biomedicine, normally they treat it similar. Maybe D2 blocker, <laughs> right? But in TCM, mental energy different. We treat it differently. We treat it totally differently. Mental energy exhausted, we boost the mental energy, boost the body energy. The mental is floating, paranoia, we do calming, sedating. This part may be similar. But if someone has a stagnation, patternized behavior, thoughts, we need a regulating, activated mental energy. You see the points? Herbs, totally different. Also, exercise plan, different. Psycho connection, we call the Shen Xi connection before. Before we call the Shen Jiao, the both communication. It's not that you're watching me, I know your cycle. Not important. Mental energy, how to communicate each other. Doesn't matter what you say, if mental energy Shen Xi, we don't feel good, I try to walk away. So mental energy is super sensitive. So communication is also very important with the patients. So anyway, put away. Oh, that's too, too much something else. So that's the syndrome based. Also we have etiological factor based. PTSD is what? Post-traumatic you know, stress disorder. This diagnosis is etiological based diagnosis. Based on the PTSD, what's the patient's manifestation symptoms in the clinic? The patient can be drug addiction. The patient can be anxiety, depression. The patient can be do nothing, stay home, just enjoy the game. The patient can be anger, upset. So all the manifestations duplicated with another mental disorder as well. So only PTSD that diagnosis, if we don't know the mental dynamics, the mental energy, what's going on, there are no medication can handle PTSD because that's the etiological factor based, that's why. So you have a syndrome, symptom based, you have etiological factor based diagnosis. So here is a little bit of confusion. Does trauma causing the same chemical reaction? Absolutely not. Your trauma is a war. Your trauma is the lost parents. Your trauma, you lost investment, you lost money. Another one, lost my pet. I don't think the same chemical reaction. That need more study. But the one thing is in common, your mental energy, shen, shen qi, you share the same dynamics. So T7, catch it. They know use the herbs, use the acupuncture, and they do the exercise, and they give a certain psycho exercise, psycho support to remedy your mental energy. So let's save a lot of time, also know exactly what's going on. Because everything happening outside depends on how do you perceive it. So you generate stress. We have stressor, stress, perception. So we're talking about stress, it's just a signal. So what's a stressor? How to generate stress? What's your perception? If the perception we don't care, there's no stress at all. So that's why. Oh, so we have to pay attention. That's another topic anyway. So I'll answer your question. I try to make it longer to explain. So that's a TCM, a certain part. It's interesting, but I think very good, very good. But anyway, we need the Dr. Shea help. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I I totally w uh, agree with Dr. Yang. I think I mentioned, you know, the category of uh, Western psychiatry's uh, diagnosis because it does not tie to the ideology that well. Actually, um, people people in the research field realize that they are now doing research uh, at NIMH National Institute of Mental Health. They are proposing another way of categorizing mental illness, just like you know, like Dr. Yan's point is well taken. It could be when you had a traumatic event, it damaged this set secretary of your brain, and when another person maybe is another part of being damaged, and that part we I don't think Western medicine really knows very well. I do think Western medicine does a very good job with I call the severe mental illness, such as schizophrenia and the bipolar. And the, although we don't know, you know, the exact mechanism, but in terms of control the acute symptom, Western medicine clearly is working. And then I, as a psychiatrist, practice so many years working in a psychiatric hospital. My patients often want to stop taking medication, and then the symptoms come back. And I put them back to the medication, the symptom, you know, goes away. So that just tells me the medication is working. But how? And we know the D2 receptor, but I think they are more than just D2 receptor is going on. It's just we. Sometimes, like we don't know what we are doing. We don't know the exact mechanism. But a lot of medical practice is the same way. We, we do the practice based on our observation. Our observation is saying that is effective, although we don't know the exact mechanism yet. But since we know it's working, then we'll continue doing it. So yeah, thank you. Maybe we should move on to the final vignette and then all the questions can just wait until the very end. Okay. Okay. Um, so the last vignette is a 55 year old Korean female, auditory hallucinations, delusions about gangsters mafia monitoring her because she is special. Everyone that she meets is working for the gangsters. She does not believe that she has a mental illness. She's working full-time graveyard shift because she's less likely to be followed during the nighttime not taking any psychiatric medications, and she rationalizes that she's meeting with a mental health counselor weekly to address housing needs. Dr. Yang, you want to Okay. Uh -huh. mm. So this is the, in our medicine, clearly, they call the uh, very systematic developed thoughts type, right? So that's very clear. It's the Shen Qi floating, Yang pattern, Kuang syndrome. Based on her activity, I want to confirm you have too much activity, blaming, go there, go here, the young pattern very clear. If she tried to shut the door, close the window, and the very fear stay inside, that's a damn pattern. So this part I'm not sure yet because I don't have further information. So the treatment can be different. But basically she has more shen qi floating, develop certain thoughts. We have a traditional herb acupuncture to calm down this kind of mental energy floating situation. But if it's very acute, medication was very fast, but I puncture some very fast too, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, sometimes we calm down the mind very quick, use acupuncture. Also we have very good herbs to manage it as well. This is not from me, that's an ancient classic, a certain book. The doctor used that kind of herb in certain protocols, some things that works very long. But today the people didn't pay, uh, doesn't pay attention enough, that's why. So that's the one. Another, this kind of patients, we need more engagement from their close family, even the daughter try to maintain a certain close relationship with her to create this kind of trust first. Because in, in general paranoia, also this thing, we call the Beihai Wang Xiang, uh, this kind of the thoughts, uh, uh, paranoia situation, very difficult to maintain a relationship, especially the new daughter. If you can maintain a relationship, you pay attention, listen to her story, spend time with her, she maybe think about you can help me or you understand me. For the, that kind of points, we can make this kind of closer relationship. Then from there, we come into his mental world to shifting his mental energy on something else. That's also one part we call the Yi Jing Bian Qi. In the Nei Jing classic, they call the Yi Jing Bian Qi. Transform mental energy, change the energy to something else. For mental disorder, schizophrenia, is it possible? Yes, depends. 
possible. Sometimes they develop a certain interest, new direction, put energy on, they may be moving on. Meanwhile, you have to use the airbag puncture exercise to manage it. For floating type, do descending. Do descending. For example, if you do the wrong qigong, someone got mad, right? Mental energy, you're already rising. So you do the exercise rising, you got mad. So this energy, if you go somewhere, yeah, qigong management is good, but be careful. Don't do any rising source energy, the qigong. You have to do the sedating anchor type. So this patient has to do the sedating anchor. Also do the, we call the descending type of the breathing qigong exercise. So when we go to the nature do it, we use the yin energy pattern under the shade, evening, cooling, or very quiet place to bring the energy down and to think about the internal. So anyway, that's a little more uh, way of talking about something because it's special form anyway. So that's traditional classic, not really something new today. Uh, so we see, so energy based, that's it. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting. So for, from Western medicine point of view, if I listen to this case, the two thoughts immediately pop to my mind is this person has what we call the schizophrenia, or uh, this person probably went through a lot of trauma because the past experience shaped her kind of perspective of other people, so she become more paranoia. So I would say if you want to use the Western medicine's diagnosis criteria, I probably can say schizophrenia was is a severe form of PTSD. That's how I would think about it. And then after collect further history, if it's con confirmed that it's a schizophrenia, I probably going to use more like D2 block K, we block the dopamine receptor and to treat the uh, paranoia symptom. But if we confirm this is, uh, you know, due to past history of trauma, and that, that is, you know, in Western medicine, we said it's more likely it's an anxiety-based disorder, then we probably more target the uh, neurotransmitter system of serotonin and it will help uh, her to bring up the mood. And then I think one thing we had, we agree a lot, like this patient, if we talk about psychotherapy, the number one issue is we use the term called a therapeutic alliance. Mm -hmm. We have to have a therapeutic relationship. A patient has to trust us for us to do any therapy. If the patient like this patient can become, you know, suspicious very easily. Anything you're not careful, she's going to walk away. So uh, that will be the number one thing. I think there are also plenty of research I've done say, no matter what type of psychotherapy you do, if you are able to do a good therapeutic alliance, you are halfway through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> Questions about all the vignettes or um, let's see somewhere there's a thought here. I, I, I'm, a, I'm trained as a psychologist here in uh, uh, Bay Area, but uh, I've been working with a lot of uh, students, uh, sometimes college students. And I was, did a consultation back east where they were talking about historical trauma. Yeah, historical trauma, particularly around let's say. Uh, kids whose parents went through the war experience, but didn't really know about it, but had heard about it, but not directly, s did not see combat, or did not see deaths, or did not see, and this idea about historical trauma and loss. And I'm trying to think, there's a question here somewhere about treating the symptoms versus the cause, right? And what comments you both might have about that, about symptoms of the cause. And for something like historical trauma that might come up, how might that be looked at? How might that be treated? from uh, either uh, you know, Eastern or uh, Chinese medicine versus Western. Now again, I know the presentation might be different, but let's say the second vignette that you had, let's say he, didn't, he hadn't joined the gang or something like that, but he was just feeling sad and kind of lost and kind of uh, a sense of anomie, you know, a sense of like lack of self. How would that be viewed? How might that be treated? Does that make sense? So it's post-traumatic stress, but not necessarily because of having direct witnessed it, but having witnessed it secondarily through what parents had gone through. Like intergenerational trauma? Yeah, like intergenerational trauma, right? So we still, I didn't get it. So. Yeah, maybe you can help explain. Uh, okay. explain. Um, 
I think what this gentleman is saying, um, similar to the um, second vignette PTSD, what if the situation was that the individual did not firsthand experience a trauma, but maybe the child of someone that experienced the trauma? So how Eastern um, traditional Chinese medicine versus Western psychiatry, how would you guys look at that situation in terms of treatment? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think I had a similar question before. Unfortunately, in t the TCM traditional Chinese medicine, they don't have such direct words to talk yeah. about this one. But, in the, by the way, let me share with you the TCM psychology. They have five, four words mentioned, etiological factor, how the people, the human, responds to the, any type of stress, including the second hand. <coughs> four words right there. Li, jue, yuan, jie. <coughs> what does it mean? Li means lost the loved ones. Love was not limited to the person, also you loved everything, you lost it. Li. Jue means separated from desire. You have a certain desire, you couldn't reach it. So you have mental trouble, uh, psycho trouble as well. Yuan, uh, depressive thinking, you think everything negative, depressive. Yeah. Jie means the shen qing nan jie, emotion complex. Interesting. So any type of stress happened outside, but in the tradition of the TCM, they look at say, what's your perception, response to this situation? You feel there's a loss, emotion complex, separate from the desire, you couldn't reach it? <coughs> or that's the, uh, just the feel, the jue, or negative thoughts you always, you always do. So this triggered internal different energy. So the treatment also has four words. The four words called go, yu, dao, kai. That's the original, inner classic, original words. Go means what? Go means warning. Warning uses people the failure. For trauma patients, normally we don't do. But based on in the process, if something happened, because the trauma time patients sometimes use drugs, we use warning. Because the drugs have, when you keep doing, the some situation consequences like this. You use photos, something to warn. Like a traffic school, same thing. Go, yu, talk to, support you. This one for trauma patients, we use a lot. Go, yu, uh, second one, talk, support you. Dao means guiding. So patient has negative one, negative behavior. In a certain period of time, or do something uh, not so healthy, we have to use their energy to lead into something, do the different thing. For example, the girl has a lot of energy. They always go to WeChat or something. So we can let the girl perform in the art, music, to do something. The guy, the, the, the boy is very active. But with a bad guy or something, they do something very bad to the neighbor or something, okay, put the boys in the sports and the serpent in the group, even the volunteer or something, to transfer energy. They call it Dao. Kai means what? Kai, kai qi suo ku. Kai means open the suffering. So this one technique, one technique they call it timing and the interference, right? So when the time is coming, let the patients to open their suffering to tell you what happened before. So you have to properly, sometimes patient with a tear, crying, or anger, or something, to let the patient release the internal suffering. So that's the four etiological factors, and the person's respection of the perception based. For example, today's psycho, uh, psychology book, when they're listing all the events, they have 70 close 100, personal life based, and uh, working based, and disease based, disaster based, or something. They hold the article. But any category outside the events doesn't mean to you it's traumatic. Not sure. Perception more. So TCM in the Neijing classic, very smart to put the, this kind of Li Jue Yan Jue forwards to let you know what's your perception response to the stress you're causing the trauma. This is smart. And the next, what kind of therapy, the Go Yu Dao Kai, what combination, what to use it? Each one indicated one category, not just the meaning. The Go means your warning. They have a lot of different warning, strong warning, yelling. <laughs> you went, the parents' education, uh, education. Uh, that before they use the beat. <laughs> we don't use it now, but they will use warning for sure. So some consequences. You talk, explanation, support, use your goodness. So for some of the patients did it little, very little encouragement, some of the progression, you have to give the encouragement right away. Let them to continue. So poor energy, don't do exercise, don't eat the uh, healthy food. Uh, don't meet the people, don't make a greetings. So such things happen. Even tiny bit of meat, you have to give encouragement. And the Dao, leading the energy goes something else. Especially for a lot of energy they don't know how to do. And the Kai, open their suffering, their past experience, discomfort feeling. Uh, so that's called a suffering, to open to the surface. So that's the basic four. 
So for your questions, we can use such evaluation tools, also use the cycle tools. And the plus, nature exercise. The nature has very good harmony function. You something extra excess, the nature telling you you have to be humble, you have to be conservative. When something not enough, the nature exercise telling you you have to supplement yourself. You have to be confident. The nature is gentle, so that's why. So that's a re related detailed exercise form. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I love the like being in the nature and exercise ideas. <laughs> I think we can all use them. And, uh, and this is a very good question. Actually, um, that was my previous uh, research interest. You know, how the parent's uh, trauma is going to pass to a child. And that they actually, there are lots of research have done from the mechanism point of view, and the way Western medicine now learn when a person experiences trauma, it does not cause you gene to change, to mutate, that's what we say. It does not change your gene. However, it changed the structure of your gene, and that, that way blocked a certain protein's expression and increased other protein's ex um, expression. And that is what we call the epigenetic change. It's not a mutation of your gene, it's a structure change of your gene, and, the inter and then affect the protein expression. And that kind of epigenetic change is going to pass to your children. And the second thing uh, that parental trauma can affect children, as you probably know, is those parents, because they have you know, trauma-related symptoms, they are unable to be so attentive to the children. Their way of parenting the children might not be optimal. And the, as a child grew up in this type of environment, you are emotionally neglect in a certain way, or even might be abused because that's, parents had difficulty control their own emotion. And that's why this young person is affected. Of course, in your particular case, I would say we need to, you know, again, have a good assessment. So, I asked about what your family environment is like, you know, what your parents is like, and the, you know, how have that person to gain some kind of a perspective on how this type of child, childhood experience is affect his current way of seeing himself. Maybe he feel he's inadequate because even my parents didn't pay attention to me. How can I love myself, right? maybe how he sees himself or how he sees other. Even my parents are supposed to love me. They don't love me. They abused me. How can I expect somebody who is a stranger will love me or care about me, right? And then, you know, also the, the, the whole world view, like what's the meaning? I can imagine, you know, a lot of the parents suffer from PTSD they will not gain high social economic status, and they will not be successful in the society. And that all of those can affect this young person's perspective of the whole world and his own future. And so that's where the intervention from the Western medicine point of view come in. And again, I think we probably want to go back to more assessment, but we definitely have more understanding of the mechanism and the, one of my previous uh, research mentor, I believe he one day may get Nobel Prize for this because his study is looking at, he, his first study is looking at those um, rats, you know, the mouse, the rats. And the, the rats actually have a very interesting behavior. When the baby rats was born, the mommy usually will lick on this rats. And but they are two, you know, if you want, you can separate those two rods, two, the, the rods. One group of mom is more attentive, looking on the baby a lot, another group does not. And then if you look at those two groups of those rods, and there's one being licked by mom often, their stress response system is much more intact than this group whose mom did not lick at them. 
And that as it says, biologically, your maternal care is going to change your stress response system. Anyway, <laughs> that's just extra stuff, and it's a, it's a, uh, one of my you know uh, research interest, and I really wanted to do research in that area, but it's not something easy to do. So, anyway, <laughs> uh -huh. we're definitely running out of time, but I think we have time for one more question or two if people are willing to stay later. <laughs> but uh, this is a, uh, this question is, how might you each? address stigma and shame from each one of your perspectives. One more time. How might you each address stigma, stigma. Okay. and shame from okay. your perspectives? Yes. Uh, anyway, the people living in the world hold motives. Motive means why you're living the world. Psychology, very important, is basically, I think, oh, personal thing, I think, two part. Number one, survive. Doesn't matter you talk anything, survive. That's the psychology number one. Number two, survive better. When you can survive, number one, survive better. That's the psychology basically. Stigma related to human, how to live in the world. So stigma is not uh, basically uh, talking uh, just in this kind of general social words. Stigma is across all the culture, the basic words. So if your background is Chinese, you know your stigma. If you're Korean, you have stigma. So culture, religion, everything associated with it. So that's a very complicated one word if you're talking stigma. The second one you mentioned is the shame. The shame, yes. The shame is our psycho issue. It's a totally psycho issue. You can put in the code, in the, traditionally, they call it the shen qi, is a timidity, shen qi weakness. But with the U turn based, you want to do something, you feel frustrated, you feel something, you feel the shame, that's a U turn based. So the shen qi feel weak, exhausted. I put this one in the shen qi weakness category. Uh, also with a certain the mental, uh, the certain thoughts based, the uh, shen qi uh, floating a little bit because you have certain thoughts associated with it. Very interesting, traditionally we have five zhi. Uh, okay, five zhi, that's a very primitive emotion. Uh, basically happy, anger, uh, sad, fear, and uh, pensive thinking. Uh, that's a basic. Also emotion is multiple, include the shame, depends your Five G, how to make a different type of combination. They have five elements theory. They make it more complicated. Which one generates which one? Which one controls this one? So each one harmonize together, create a new energy. They can manifest in the many different types of emotions, include the shame. Shame basically is negative, inverted, personal sensation based. It's going to the Dian situation. You understand, right? Then Quan Quan's energy mentally go outside. Shame is mental energy toward inside, self inside experiencing based. So that's how we're talking. The Shen Qi goes inverted action and the feel that's kind of exhaustion. But people learn from the shame, remember. So people have the ability to change the energy pattern from one to another, especially people, psychology. Number one, so why? Number two, so why better? You want, everybody will want to change that kind of negative energy, be the positive, and be kind of uh, experience, and support myself to keep moving forward. If someone feels shame, never can stand up, so you have to see Dr. Xie, right? <laughs> uh, so that's the cycle based. So manifestation on the emotion, many, countless, but the 5G is stable. That's the heaven gave us genetically. No, that's why. So I answer the question, I don't know is it okay or not. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, thank you, Dr. Yeah. So, for, from Western medicine, or, or my personal perspective, I would say stigma is actually is the society placed on somebody, placed on this person with mental illness, or what they see this person with mental illness is different from the rest of us. That's this type of stigma. And it's a negative way. It's not, oh, you are different from me, and you're superior to me, or it's you are inferior to me. That's, this is how I see stigma. I feel shame is that person with mental illness internalize this stigma. That because everybody else say if you have mental illness, you must be weak, you must be whatever. So I internalize this kind of perspective. I feel ashamed. So, 
to, to, to deal with that and that my approach um, maybe is also because I as a child psychiatrist I often deal with not just the patient I deal with the patient and the family and the school and the community and then for me to be able to help this child the number one thing I always say I need to have you all at least agree on something so for them to agree on something, the number one thing I would need to do is education. And I want to let them know, based on my many years of education, mental illness is just like many other physical illness. They have the biological basis, it's a chronic disease, and it is treatable. It does not mean this person with mental illness is worse than any of you. This person with mental illness is just exactly like you have pneumonia or have hepatitis or have whatever. So that will be my number one thing. And I want to educate the parents, the teacher, and the community. If I don't do this part, I don't think I'm able to help this child. So that's how I do it. And the ones I'm able to have everybody on this page and everybody's conversation with this child will also shape how this child see herself or himself. And that is the way to address the shame issue. Thank you. Uh, so 中文叫污名化。污名化。標籤化。我還是上次寫到。我記得是標籤化,所以我把它I <笑><笑> made this words as neutral. Uh -huh. hey, not a negative. This is a little bit different here. Uh -huh. Okay. <笑> For example, uh, when talking the culture, your background. You know the when I saw on the TV, uh, the 5, 6 years old hold a gun, marching with the adult. So when you grow up, you have to kill your enemy, killing. In that group of people, that's their stigma, I think. Uh, that's a okay. normal thing. But it, for example, if you're in different country, even in the USA, that's several years old, you hold a gun, possible, that's the trouble, right? No, no parents like that kind of thing. Depends, different thing. For example, you talk a lot, people say, this family always fighting. But when you go see them, no, they just talk a lot, make a lot of voice, that's it. <laughs> so then that family is normal. <laughs> so another family talking, they say, we couldn't listen to you, but we are quiet for sure. Like my father, you talk big, he feels sick, but the heart not comfortable. So we have to talk soft. So that's why. Based on the different background, culture, family, so I made a stigma like a neutral feeling. Okay. If that's the wu ming hua, uh -huh. connecting one, as doctor, we have to very be careful. Don't use the mental disorder to label the patients. The patient hold it and stick them up forever, right? Thank you. I've been told that we're definitely out of time. So um, on behalf of Asian Health Services, SMH, and also our co-sponsors this evening, uh, OACC, just want to thank Dr. Yang again and Dr. She for providing us with this talk. And that brings us to the end of our program. So um, if you're interested in mental health services or learning more about it, feel free to grab some flyers and brochures on your way out. <laughs>